Hello. Welcome to an overview of diabetes in the schools provided for you uh, from Interior Health. This training session, school personnel will have a general understanding of type 1 diabetes, be able to recognize the symptoms of low blood sugar, which is hypoglycemia, and blood sugar, hyperglycemia, and know how to respond to an incident of lower high blood sugar, and know who to contact in an emergency when a student with diabetes needs assistance. Diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic health condition in which the body either can produce insulin cannot produce enough insulin, or cannot effectively use the insulin it produces. The exact cause is unknown. However, genetic and environmental factors both play a part. Diabetes is not contagious. Types of diabetes that may affect school-aged children, type 1 and type 2, and this presentation will focus on type 1 diabetes, it's also called T1D. It affects approximately 1 in 400 to 500 children. It affects boys and girls equally, are diagnosed around preschool age. Type diabetes occurs when the body is unable to produce insulin, and insulin is a hormone that helps the body control the level of sugar or glucose in the blood. With insulin, glucose builds up in the blood instead of being used for energy. To make one diabetes, insulin is taken daily by injection or by using an insulin pump. It is not caused by lifestyle or diet. Two diabetes is more common in adults also becoming more prevalent in children and youth. The development of type diabetes is complex and may be related to obesity, lifestyle, and genetics. Children and youth with type 2 diabetes usually use oral medication to manage their diabetes but may be on insulin. It is likely for children with type 2 diabetes on oral medication to experience emergency episodes of high low blood sugar than it is for children taking insulin. It's a hormone produced by the pancreas, and the amount of insulin in the bloodstream varies according to the level of glucose in the blood. Each time we eat, our blood glucose level rises. The pancreas responds by producing an appropriate amount of insulin, and then the glucose returns to a baseline level within approximately two hours. Well, it works like a key that opens the door to the cell so that glucose can be used for energy. With insulin, glucose builds up in the bloodstream. We have that hyperglycemia. And the blood cells are deprived of their energy source forced to burn fat and muscle for energy. And key bodies, the byproducts of fat metabolism, build up in the bloodstream. This may lead to a dangerous condition called ketoacidosis if left undid. There are ways that insulin can be injected into the student. The least common way is with a syringe and needle. The syringe is filled with insulin, typically from a vial that is refrigerated when not in use. And through a small needle at the end of the syringe. Today, syringes and needles are smaller and less painful than in previous years. And more commonly, there's the insulin pen, the picture on the right. Insulin pens are the size and shape of a large marker or oversized writing pen, and a small needle is placed on the tip of the pen. Insulin is dialed up by turning the dosing button at the end of the pen. They're connected into the child. Most children will have two pens. One with a long-acting insulin, likely this, they will take this insulin at bedtime or in the morning, and a pen filled with a fast or rapid-acting insulin. And it's the fast and rapid-acting insulin pen that they use at mealtimes. Insulin pumps are the third form of insulin delivery systems. Basically, they are a small battery-operated microcomputer that's about the size of a deck of cards. They have insulin in a reservoir, which then travels from the pump to the child through a thin, flexible tube and catheter. Or support worker or family member will program the pump so it provides a small amount of background insulin throughout the day and a large amount of insulin at mealtimes based on what the child will eat. It's to know that if there is an issue with the insulin pump, the child's blood sugars can rise very quickly and they should receive immediate attention. They have an insulin pump that looks like a small white pod attached directly to their skin. This pod holds a battery and insulin and it's controlled by a remote. There are other white patches that are sometimes on the skin that, that allow for easy measurement of insulin levels in the bloodstream as, as well. So um, the goal for children with type 1 diabetes at, at school is that the child will function at full potential physically and mentally. 
diabetes should cause as little disruption as possible to the child's school day, that the child from peers should be avoided as much as possible, that children can participate in all activities. And um, us from our nursing support services partners is that if your classroom um, is going to have treats in order to include the student with diabetes, uh, such as uh, birthday cup, cupcakes or something, um, have them given at lunch time so the student with diabetes can more easily be involved and adjust their lunch insulin to accommodate the treat. Diet management at school may be the exact same as how it's managed at home. So in support, student diabetes can participate fully and safely in all school activities, including physical education and sport. The activity has health benefits and helps with blood sugar management. Students need, though, to have unrestricted access to emergency snacks and drinks at any time, including in the classroom, the school bus, and the exam if necessary to prevent low blood sugar. Students also need to be able to eat all snacks and meals on time and be provided with adequate time to finish their food. Students need access to their diabetes equipment at all times to be able to check their blood sugar anytime and anywhere, including the classroom and other locations of school and during any school activity. If preferred, a student, a private location for them to do blood sugar monitoring must be provided. Type 1 diabetes need to be able to respond to the results of their blood sugar reading anywhere and any time and be able to contact their parents as needed to manage their diabetes. High blood sugars can increase thirst and need to urinate. Students should be allowed unrestricted access to the bathroom. Hypoglycemia. This low blood sugar that occurs when the sugar level in the blood drops below what the body needs to function normally. Low sugar is usually the result of too much insulin, not enough food, missing or delaying meals or snacks, extra physical activity, especially intense or prolonged activity, illnesses involving vomiting or diarrhea, and drinking alcohol. Child specific symptoms will be listed in the child's NS or Nursing Support Services Individual Care Plan or Medical Alert Plan. If a child has symptoms of low blood sugar, sorry, blood glucose, and the blood glucose levels cannot be checked, always treat as low blood glucose. But not anything by mouth to an unconscious child to verbalize what they're feeling and some display symptoms, such as in this poster. Type 2 blood sugar is a rare event at school. Check the diabetes support plan. Every diabetic student should have a fast-acting carb or carbs available in the event of low blood sugar. The diabetes support plan will indicate a specific treatment plan. So, if emergency treatment is needed, never leave the student alone. So sugar, if it occurs, can be life-threatening. Symptoms of severe low blood sugar include loss of consciousness and seizure. A severe low blood sugar and who cannot swallow will require an injectable medication called glucagon. Another presentation. If a student is having severe low blood sugar, always stay with the student. At the first sign of low blood sugar, give 15 grams of fast-acting sugar. Tablets and juice work the fastest, as liquid sugar is the quickest sugar source absorbed by the body. So say liquids um, honey, must be swallowed to work, and they're not absorbed through the line of the mouth. And no longer recommended for the treatment of hypoglycemia as they are not as effective. Wait 15 minutes to allow the fast-acting sugar to raise blood glucose. Blood sugar of the child is still below 4 millimoles per liter. Repeat this till they are 4 or higher. Once our 4 millimoles per liter greater, follow up with food that has carbohydrate and protein, such as crackers and cheese, half a sandwich, hummus and crackers, fruit and cheese, example. This will need to be monitored for 30 additional minutes after treatment for low blood glucose. A teacher staff member should always remain with the student, so send a student runner to the office for help. Do not give food or drink if the student is unconscious, having a seizure, or is unable to swallow. If a place your school, immediately call the emergency school staff person trained in glucagon administration and someone to call 911. Emergency school staff person trained to respond to low blood sugar incidents should begin treatment while emergency medical support is being applied. The student, the student on their side, uh, contact the parent. 
follow the actions on the student's diabetes care plan. Her glycemia, or high blood sugar, is blood sugar above the child's target range. High sugar happens when food, activity, and medications are not balanced, and due to growth, illness, infection, stress, and hormones in the menstrual cycle. High blood sugar may also occur when a person with diabetes is sick or under stress. High blood sugar typically occurs slowly, so over days, and it's not typically an emergency, but can result in a serious condition called diabetes ketoacidosis if left untreated. High blood sugar include excessive thirst, dry mouth, urine more often than usual, chain tight or nausea, blurred vision, and tiredness. Students with high blood sugar will need to check their blood sugar level and take extra insulin as needed. The students uh, should be allowed to drink water and use the washroom facilities needed. It's more of an emergency with kids who are on an insulin pump, as it may be a sign that the pump is not working properly and they're not getting the right amount of insulin delivered. That's the role of school staff. Well, staff should be aware of the student's NSS, Nursing Support Services, individual care plan, or medical alert plan, and be able to provide emergency treatment. Call dead adults as needed and call 911 when, care, when the care plan indicates to do so. Always the 10 to 15 minutes to allow that fast acting sugar to raise the blood glucose level. No may need to take snacks outside of, uh, out when they're outside or at gym class. It comes from the Ministry of Education website. This also suggests the following. Be with district policies and procedures. Communicate with caregivers and keep up-to-date information about the student's condition. Maintain the level of support needed. Report changes in the student's usual behavior, health, habits, etc. to the parents or guardians. Part in the development of the student's school uh, care plan, including planning for natural disasters, where a full engage nursing support services or public health to assist in developing a medical or uh, care plan, staffing and instruction in case of an emergency. And for about the NSS care, um, see the resource section of this document. Public health may assist with children who are not eligible for nursing support services delegated care. And for information about public health support, um, please contact your local district public health nurse. You also need to familiarize staff of the details, symptoms of low blood sugar, and how to respond appropriately. Familiarize staff with the names and faces of students with diabetes and provide where support, sorry, for appropriate and detailed emergency respond for such students. And all school, school personnel of the student's conditions, medical care plan, location of each individual's personal supplies. And post-emergency care instructions in a strategic area of the school where they will be accessible by all staff as well as the individual's right to privacy. School not responsible for administering insulin via injection or pump or managing the insulin pump. Call the parents if the child vomits, becomes lethargic, loses appetite, feels unwell, or sick, or has a fever. Family is to inform the school that the child has diabetes. On the school, the child's unique care needs and usual symptoms of low blood sugar, low blood glucose, and the any additional health concerns that may impact diabetes management. Make provision for the administration of insulin while the student is school. A student is wearing a diabetes medication alert bracelet or necklace. See contact information, medical information, and details of the individual's care plan and treatment at the school up to date. Try and maintain all the supplies required by the child at school, including, if necessary, a supply of glucagon and disposed sharps. Inform of any relevant changes to lifestyle, health, or diabetes management. Participate in development of child school medical can including uh, planning for unexpected events such as returning late from a field trip, school lockdown, or natural disasters. Uh, support services. Um, it's a provincial program delivered through regional health authorities and assists parent caregivers to help children with special health care needs lead active, healthy lives in their communities while providing safe, consistent care and appropriate health support. Enrollment is voluntary. In related management of diabetes, it's um, School nursing support services coordinators can 
provide support to children who require assistance with the management of diabetes at school due to developmental level or a new diagnosis. For example, a child requires assistance with blood flu monitoring or requires assistance of self-administration of insulin via pump, pen, or syringe in school. Make individual teaching and training to school staff who are directly involved with the child care. Uh, develop individual care plans for the child and provide support for family and child and are available for consultation for any student with diabetes or other chronic health issues. Children who are enrolled in the NSS program should also be listed on the school medical alert list. Children remain in the NSS program until they are able to participate in self-care tasks which depend on their developmental level and experience with diabetes. Public health provide consultation and planning with parents students and school staff regarding life-threatening medical conditions, and they can provide this general diabetes uh, teaching school staff and students' peers in consultation with family. And health nurses will offer consultations throughout the school year. Uh, as of January 2014, public health nurses began glucagon administration training for select school staff, two to three school staff. Um, this is dependent on the parent asking for this service and purchasing glucagon and filling out the appropriate forms for this. Glucagon can now be given uh, both as a physician or insulin. Some resources. Um, information has been adapted from the Vancouver Island Health Authority and Vancouver Coastal Nursing and uh, nursing support services uh, as well. We hope this helps.